So thank you all for coming on this nice, lovely evening. The first, I think, evening all of us can go outside and enjoy ourselves, and we're here. So you came for something. So I would like to start by inviting you to share with me what you came to know more about so that I can focus on those particular areas. And just because you're a guest, Chris, uh, still means I should deliver something that interests you so that your time is honored as well. Okay, so if you left with information on one thing, and I'll tell you who I am and what I do in a minute, but just if you left with one thing today, what, what would you like to know more about? And it should look like a symptom, a health issue or symptom okay. that you would like some answers on what to do next with, for. Um, probably, I mean, with health, I've had hormone imbalances with many things and thyroid specifically, but maybe learning how to have more energy. Energy, okay. Yeah. Is this something everybody here can relate to that energy could stand to be boosted? Could you have more? Okay, good. And then, how about you? Uh, I don't know if this is a health concern, but probably anti-aging. Okay, so staying and young, youth. Like from the inside out, I guess, and then <clears throat> definitely hormones. I want to see, like, how, I just got my blood tested, actually, so how, you know, how you top up hormones to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. Chris? Uh, yeah, anti-aging, energy. Hormone balance. I'm 44, so I'm 25. Yeah. So I'm at that uh, age point in my in a male's life where things start to, on the downhill slide. So I'd like to, I guess, see how what I can do about that. Uh, can we say declining use? Yeah. Okay. So some other things that will come up usually are things like sleep, metabolism, and sex drive. So I'll, I'll sort of try and tie all of those things in together. Endurance and stamina, which ties into the energy. But, but stamina is something different from energy, right? So I'll, I'll tie it all together to the aging process and how to slow down and stop it. Um, <clears throat> so I started out in regular medicine, just like most doctors who spend their lives wanting to help people. I thought I was going to help people. And I did, what didn't I do? I was searching for a spot in medicine that I could make a difference to people's lives. And what I found is that the longer I stayed in medicine, and I'm not 25, the longer I stayed in medicine, I was just finding that I was stopping people from being sick, but I wasn't actually helping them be healthier. I wasn't ha helping them be better. And I wanted to be a doctor since I was 11. So it, wa it was like my lifelong purpose and my calling to be in medicine. This wasn't something where my parents decided I should be a doctor and off I went and did that and then all I did was write prescriptions after. And I didn't like that solution that I was trained only to write prescriptions, kind of, sort of. You know, they mentioned this biopsychosocial model of medicine, but it didn't translate into actually talking to my patients. You know, it was your tests are all normal. I don't know what to do with you. You must be getting old. Um, here's your prescription for the things I know how to diagnose and treat, and off you go. And I found myself many, many, many days scratching my head going, but I know my patient. I mean, you know that. I bond with my patients, right? Like I talk to them, I get to know them as people, and I found myself going, something's wrong, and I don't know what it is. And so I was starting to get this feeling that I'm just not satisfied. And I did, you know, I moved from department to department. I did obstetrics and gynecology, women's health. I even did that at a postgraduate level. I did pediatrics. I did orthopedics. I, I did general surgery. I, I, I dabbled in so many things. I, I did palliative care. And I couldn't find a niche that made me feel like I was satisfied and making the difference I thought I wanted to make to my patients. And then fast forward to 31 years old, and I was absolutely 12, 15 years older than I actually was. 
I woke up one day and thought, what the heck happened to me? You know, I felt old, I struggled to get out of bed, I had very little energy, I, I ceased to function. I could barely make it through a day at work, and then that was it. At the same time, nothing I did could stop me from growing in size. So there, I was a size 14, which is six sizes bigger than I am today. And I dieted, I counted calories, I exercised diligently, I measured myself like I was supposed to, I stood on the scale every day, I worked up to, you know, running two to three miles at a time, which I'm not a stamina and endurance person, I hate that, but I did it, I did the kickboxing, I did the Taibo, I did the Pilates, I went to the gym, I had a trainer, and my clothing size kept growing and the tire around my belly kept inflating. And then I thought, well, what the heck? I mean, I may as well just eat chocolate cake and cookies for breakfast because that's what I enjoyed. I mean, starving myself, eating cabbage mm. and lettuce and all these things didn't make any difference. And typically when I meet patients, many of them have that story. You know, it doesn't matter what I do, uh, I can't lose weight. It doesn't matter what I do, I can't have more energy. Nothing's working. Oh, and by the way, my tests are all normal, right? And so patients typically come to me because their tests are all normal, but they know they're not. Or they say something like what you said. I'm at that point where I feel like my health is declining now. Or I feel like I'm getting older, as opposed to being invincible. You know, now I'm noticing that things are changing. And what does medicine teach us to say to our patients? You're getting older, there's nothing to do about it. So the first thing that I know in this practice is that aging, hi, come on in, we just started. So aging is not something you have to accept. And in medicine, we teach patients that your hormone levels decline because you're aging. And so that if you're a, and I'm, thank you for sharing your age and all of that with us, but I'm gonna fast forward you to 60, okay? So Chris, you come to us at age 60, and I test your hormone levels, and I'm gonna say to you, oh, that's normal for a 60-year-old, right? Yeah. But at 60, you still wanna feel and function like you're 20 or 30, right? So you age because your hormone levels decline. Your hormone levels do not decline because you're aging. So it's a complete flip in how we think in functional medicine. Um, when you're 60 and you come to me and I test you and your estrogen is zero, I'm supposed to tell you that that's normal for a 60-year-old woman. But you see, that's because we think in medicine that it's okay to have things dry up, shrivel up, and fall out on you as you get older, and that's just part of aging. As opposed to going, look what I've done. You know, I've unaged myself or aged myself backwards to 25, and I function like a 25-year-old. I feel like a 25-year-old, and I have the results in my life as a 25-year-old because I've restored my hormone balance back to youthful levels. And what I'm going to teach you today is the steps that we take and how we go about restoring hormone levels such that we can feel and function younger and look younger too. Okay? Is that interesting? So Mona, what we did was we just talked about some of the things we want to know more about. Are these things that are relevant to you? Energy, sleep, uh, let's put mood here, mood and brain. Because these are common things that change. So, is your list in there? Uh, for me, it's hormone balance. My thyroid's been off for years, and I've tried so much. I can't, I can't get it back on track. And now I finally took a prescription for Synthroid. I did it for five days. Called here. I stopped taking it last night. So, well, I my, my thyroid, which balances your hormones, like back thank you. In order, you're I frustrated. All that stuff. So yeah. I know, I know for sure it's my thyroid. So there, I had just had to be like I had diagnosed myself with a thyroid autoimmune disease, 
because at that point, so pre preceding that, I was that person whose tests were on all normal, but I didn't feel normal. I knew something was wrong. I knew I wasn't functioning like I should. I was aging faster than I've ever aged in my life. And I can show you pictures of myself two years prior, and the difference is dramatic how quickly I aged, how much I aged in those two years. But I had to diagnose myself. I ended up losing my thyroid. I ended up on Synthroid. And over there, I used to have um, filters in my shower and bathtub drains because my hair was falling out so much. I was cold. I couldn't shower every day. My skin was dry and cracking. I wore two and three sweaters, even if it was summer. And I had every symptom of low thyroid, including that weight gain that didn't make any sense. You know, that gaining weight out of proportion to what you're eating and what you're doing. That's a symptom of a malfunctioning low thyroid. But my tests were all normal. And that's how my journey into functional medicine started, because I had the accelerating aging. I had the normal test, but something was drastically wrong with how I felt. And I honestly used to wake up and think, if this is what it feels like to be 32, I don't even, and you know when you're 30, you think 50 is old, right? Uh, and I'm like, what's 50 gonna be like? Like, am I gonna be shriveled up and dead? Am I gonna be in a home? Am I gonna, like, how am I gonna function if this is what I feel like now? And because I was ready for the message, functional medicine appeared through my patients. I started meeting patients that were taking supplements that were making a difference. And prior to that, I was that doctor that would say, well, I have 300% more training than any Canadian MD, and I know everything. So if there was something about supplements and vitamins working, I would know about it, and I would have learned about it in med school, so stop reading the internet. You know, I, I had that ego. You know, I didn't believe in anything that didn't come from a medical journal and from a drug rep and fixed by a prescription or something that I learned about in med school. That was what I lived by. Even though I told you, I wasn't feeling like what I was doing was making a big difference, right? Um, and then a patient introduced me to this concept of bioidentical hormones. And so because you said hormones, because you said hormone balance and things are changing, you said hormone balance, like it's a common thing that people have. And patients, more than their doctors, know when they have hormone issues. And most doctors are going, no, there's nothing wrong with you. So let's talk about what is a bioidentical hormone and why is that the cool thing to know about. So first of all, who wants to tell me what is a hormone? You're not allowed. Anyone? What's your understanding of a hormone? organism, I guess, in your body that instructs your body to do things. <laughs> right. So a hormone is a very good try because, but did you see that? Like we all hear the word and then we were like, but if you don't know what it is, then how are we going to balance it for you or lead you on the steps? And I think this is the critical, critical piece. A hormone is a chemical messenger that controls every single function in your body. It does regulate, connect, direct everything, regulate. So whether it's youth, whether it's stopping you from getting older or making you accelerate your aging, whether it's your mood, your focus, your brain function, your fatigue levels, your energy, your blood pressure, your pulse, your blood sugar levels, sleep metabolism, sex drive, endurance, stamina, all of these things are regulated by hormones. Pretty important, right? So can you live without a blood pressure and a blood sugar level? No, you'll die, right? Can you live without regulating your body temperature? No. These are critical functions and they're regulated by hormones. Now if I said name a hormone, what's the first hormone you would think of? Name something, quick. Estrogen, estrogen right? And you said? Yes. Estrogen. Can you live without estrogen? No. Yes. Because women get their ovaries taken out, right? Women get hysterectomies, they get their ovaries removed, or they go into the menopause and they're no longer recommended to take hormones, so they're living without estrogen. Would they go to zero though? Yeah, for some. 
not in today's world as often, but, um, and then men who have testicular cancer or testicular trauma, they, they don't have their testes to make testosterone, right? So they're on subnormal levels of testosterone and women on sub, so they live, they might be so miserable that they wish they were dead, but they don't die without it. However, if you took away your hormone cortisol or your hormone insulin or your hormone thyroid, you die. So we have life-sustaining hormones and we have non-life-sustaining hormones and we should be looking at both. Now most people call and they yell at Deanna because they can't just book their appointment with Dr. Iyer and get a hormone prescription right away because Oprah said or Suzanne Summers said or some famous person is taking hormones and they think it's as simple as coming in and getting a prescription. Most doctors think it's that simple. I did postgraduate obstetrics and gynecology. I worked in a woman's menopause clinic and I thought that too, that you can just write a prescription for estrogen because you have symptoms of hot flashes. Or you can just, you know, years ago when testosterone just came out on the market for men, it was just write a prescription. But it's not that simple because it's all about safety and doing it right. And it's more about the balance and the ratio between your life-sustaining and your non-life-sustaining hormones. And if there's anything you leave with today, that would be what I would want you to leave with. The knowledge of hormones and how they balance and how they interact with each other and some critical steps to get, and I'm going to teach you that, how to get started for your own hormones that you have to work better. Because there are things stopping them right now that are not getting, that making you not get the results. And that's why my tests were normal. That's why some of your tests are normal, but you don't feel normal. So we're going to talk about hormone blockers. So if hormones are chemical messengers, then they work by chemical reactions. Think about your cell having receptocytes. That would be a lock. And the hormone as the key that comes, unlocks the lock and says, make energy. Stop aging faster, control your body temperature, lower your blood sugar levels, regulate your fat storage and your fat burning. Okay, so whatever that function is, your hormones directing the cell to do that, exactly what you said. But if you have something blocking the receptor site, now the hormone, so your test is normal, but it can't get to the lock and do the work. Make sense? So I'm going to teach you about what these blocks are. Okay, then hormones made by your body are bioidentical. Anything that's called bio something means natural to you, right? So a bioidentical hormone means natural to your body. So we have synthetic hormones, Premarin, what's the other one, Provera, right? These are synthetic hormones. They're made by drug companies, they're patented, and their molecular structure is not identical to your own lock and key mechanism. So can I open your house door with my house key? I might be able to with a little bit of jiggling, jimmying, some things. Many keys can fit locks and sort of open them. Not perfectly, but they can, right? You, you, know, you know this. But I probably can't start your car with my car key. So sometimes it's that different and then it's not going to work at all, but sometimes there's just a couple grooves different and I can sort of make it work. So think about a regular synthetic hormone as something that kind of works at your receptor site, but it's not exactly the same. So does it not make sense that something that looks exactly the same as your own key will go into your own lock and do the right work at the right time in the best form? Yes? So that's the difference between synthetic and bioidentical. Bioidentical hormones are made to be identical to your body's hormones. Now, there are some pharmaceutical drugs that are bioidentical, like Synthroid is bioidentical. However, when I was on Synthroid, I didn't feel normal at all. I'm now on a bioidentical compounded thyroid hormone and I feel perfect. And there's a difference in how they work in the body because of every other additive and thing in it right and so we can get into that in a little bit 
But is that so far making sense? So you age because your hormone levels decline. Your hormone levels do not decline because you're aging. How did we come up with this theory? We came up with this theory because they would look at communities that had the highest number of centenarians and the most active aged people. Right? So, and we'll pick on the Japanese because that's where the first studies started coming from. So we have uh, the Okinawans. Until now, they have McDonald's and they've had the radiation disaster and all of that stuff. But let's go before all of that. They had the highest number of 100-year-olds in the world collected in one area. The more important thing about these people was they weren't only over 100. They were active. They were independent. They were, had vitality. They were living their lives as if they were younger. They didn't have the same cancer. In fact, they didn't have cancer. They didn't get heart disease. They didn't have any of these things happening. Isn't that cool? And when they measured their hormone levels, what they found was really fascinating. Their hormone levels were very similar to young North Americans and younger people in their community as well. And so they naturally managed their hormone levels and kept them at youthful levels. And this is where the premise came up that if we restored hormone levels back to youthful levels, we would reverse aging and go back to young. So we can feel and look younger simply by restoring our youthful hormone levels. However, it's not that simple. We don't just get to write you a prescription and say, off you go, here's your fountain of youth. Okay, so you're ready to learn more about how to have that happen. Now, I've done emergency medicine for over 20 years, and <clears throat> one day I was on call. So even after I opened this clinic, um, now how does functional medicine work? Functional medicine works like this. We look at a human being and we assume that you are like no one else, as opposed um, to medicine, which is everybody's made the same. Right? Because if you all had blood pressure, a high blood pressure, then what would I do? I'd give you the same dose of medicine as you, but you don't look anything like each other. You're not even of the same gender. And I'd give you the same amount as her, right? But there's nothing common between the two of you, nothing the same. You're not even the same size, height, shape, anything. But I don't know why we do this, but we do it. You're all aware of that. Tylenol, same thing. Advil, same thing. Uh, name most of the meds, heartburn pills, same thing. So in functional medicine, we say you're a biochemically and genetically unique individual, and how do I customize and personalize my approach to you and who you are in your life? Because that's what's going to get you the result that you're looking for. And when we treat everybody the same way, then we are getting hit and miss results, right? So I started in functional medicine the same way that most people do. You go to an introductory training course, they teach you about hormones and how to prescribe it and you know what's the difference between bioidentical and regular. And I, because I was a traditional doctor stepping into functional medicine looking to solve my own health issues, you know, I wanted to not have that big fat tire on my belly when I bent down. I didn't even have kids then. I've had two kids since then. And so Looking at it from a traditional medical perspective, it made sense to me. But what happened was, in my first year, it was 50-50. Some people got great results, and some people didn't. And I couldn't figure it out. Heck, wasn't I using bioidentical hormones? Was I not doing everything the way it's supposed to be done? I took the course, I learned the lessons, and why were not all my patients getting the same results? So I, I was sitting on call one night and trying to figure this out. You know, hormones are chemical messengers, right? So here's my hormone. So hormones being chemical messengers, perhaps I might have to look at the biochemistry, right? Because the chemical reaction of a hormone and your cell receptor is occurring in your body's biochemistry. That fluid environment inside your cells and around your cells from which you make hormones 
and in which you use them. So I was waiting for this gentleman to have his heart testing done. He came in having a heart attack at two o'clock in the morning and you know I'm sitting there thinking okay well I gotta wait and my brain starts doodling and thinking and you know what's going on well, how can I improve my practice what do I need to look at and that's actually how I created the team that we have here at Better. So I'm thinking okay if there's a biochemistry what what does the biochemistry come from like what what influences it okay so there's nutrients. Nutrients shape your biochemistry, right? And now I'm looking at the fact that medicine always looks at the physical body, yes? Yeah, we look at it as a physical body. If it's fixed, if broken, we'll fix it. If it hurts, we'll treat it. If you got heartburn, I'll give you a pill for it, right? But it's a physical thing. And I'm, I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking, okay, there's, there, there's something interesting that just happened a week ago. A, a week ago, I was in ER again and I had this fellow come in with abdominal pain and I thought he might have had a kidney stone. And I did his x-ray and when you do that view of, uh, the, it's called KUB, I'm looking at his spine and his lumbar spine was riddled with arthritis. Like really bad arthritis. And I asked him, do you have back pain? And he said, no. How could you not have back pain? And the week before in my office, I'd had a gentleman with a very similar x-ray of his back that I was filling out disability papers for. This man could barely function in his life, in his work, in anything. He had so much pain. I'd known him for years. I believed him. He was not scamming me. And I was working with him to put him on disability. And so my brain is going to this thing thinking, well, how do I have two men, similar age, similar build, and similar degrees of serious, severe arthritis, and one has no clue he has the disease? And one is now looking at his entire life slipping through his fingers. He can't work anymore. He can't function anymore. He can't play with his grandkids. He can't be with his wife. He's in that much pain and he's being disabled from it. And what's the difference between the two? And I'm a huge fan of the role of this particular aspect of your being in all of my treatment approaches to my patients. So what do you think that is? What do you think this third thing that's critical for me to focus on when I work with you and that influences all of who you are, your health, your state of being? So we have your physical, your nutritional, hormonal, biochemical, and your mental. mental. Thank you. So your mental, emotional, spiritual, right? Make sense? So I'm sitting in Hannah, Alberta. I'm thinking about stress and the role of stress in your life. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this. I'm actually trying to figure out why my practice was a 50-50 hit and miss, which is most people who do just a regular hormone practice. And I thought, okay, when we have stress, we make stress coping hormones, okay? Cortisol. Your acute stress is adrenaline, noradrenaline, all those types of things. Chronic stress, your ongoing stress is now managed by a hormone called cortisol. Have you heard of that? Most of you may know about it as the belly fat hormone, which I will touch on. But some people have lots of stress since childhood. My one patient that was going on disability was in a residential school had a really terrible life, had a really difficult childhood, had a really difficult life on a reserve, right? And so I'm, I'm thinking about the difference between these two men and why they're presenting to me so differently. So how many of you can relate to the fact that we always have stress? Could be aging parents, it could be kids, it could be jobs, it could be spouses, it could be, uh, who knows what we have, but everybody has something going on in their life, yes? And many people have had a lot going on in their life all along. We just cope with it differently and we forget that it plays any role in where we are today and how we think about things. Right? Make sense? 
So if you're having that much stress and you're making this much stress coping hormones, I said we make hormones from our biochemistry, so you're depleting that. And we said nutrients feed your biochemistry, so you're depleting your nutrient stores. Can you see that clearly? Mona, is that sort of taking you someplace you've been reading about or anything like that? I'm familiar with all this. Good. So what happens is you have a state of nutritional depletion, right? So when you're depleted, you are running out of what you need when you need it to make what you need when you need it, and ultimately your body is now working suboptimally. Can you see how aging occurs? And so the more stress you have, the faster you age. But it's not diagnosable as anything. You just don't feel good. Your sleep may be not as restorative. Your energy is less than it used to be. Your skin doesn't regenerate the way it used to. Well, whatever it is, right? I want you to remember a couple key things over here though. Pain, high intensity exercise. Many of my patients think that they're not athletes and yet they are. They're doing spin class for an hour, they're doing hot yoga for two hours, they're running with their friends and biking on the weekends and then they're cross country skiing and they're who knows what all they're doing in one week. And caveman historically didn't do that much physical exercise ever. He maybe ran from a tiger a couple times, but the rest of the time he was pretty sedentary. He moved, but he wasn't running from a tiger all day long. Is that making sense? And so always remember that this has the same impact on your state of nutrient depletions. Then there's other things. Anytime your body um, processes anything, Anytime a cell works, you breathe, you think, you uh, pick up your baby, you're using up nutrients to perform that task. So the question is, are you repleting adequately for everything that you're using up? And the answer is, nobody ever does until they come see me. And even so, it's really difficult. Why? See, in the old days, only your nutrients and your genetics influenced your biochemistry. Today, so tell me all the things that affect your biochemistry today. About the environment. Thank you. Pollution in the environment, so the air inside your home and outside your home. Anything else? Food with its herbicides, pesticides, chemicals, toxins, preservatives, colorings, additives, whatever. Right? What else? Maybe you don't exercise or move at all. What else? Body care. Everything you put from the tip of your hair down to your toenails. Every single thing you put on your body goes into your body. And your liver has to process this out. So you learn something new now. Right? Because it's adding to your depletions. What about your home care? Everything you clean your house with, from your toilet bowl cleaner to your different solutions for everything, right? From the tub and tile to the tap shiner to the glass cleaner to the dish detergent to the laundry detergent to your fabric softener to all of these things. Then what about medication that you're taking like Synthroid that has dyes and colorings and other things? But what about your own body's hormones? And do you think that taking Synthroid is any different on your body than taking bioidentical estrogen? No, still goes through your liver, still goes through the process. A chemical reaction is occurring, your body's getting depleted. Are you repleting for all of these different things? Absolutely not. Is your food quality the same as it used to be 10 and 15 and 20 years ago? No, it's not. Is your body okay and healthy enough to be digesting all these salads and green smoothies that you think are healthy? Or should you be on a whole cooked food diet for now? What is the state of your gut? Can you actually assimilate and absorb nutrients through it? What is the state of your liver? Is it actually working efficiently or is it now backed up because you've got so many, 104,000 new chemicals in the environment today than there were 50 years ago? 
Never mind that you fill your car with gasoline. Never mind that you might have hobbies that involve painting or soldering or chemicals and you're a renovator and you live in a new house or you smoke or you love your red wine. Every single thing you do revolves around processing it through your liver and every time your liver works it's a chemical reaction that adds to your depletions. Make sense? Can you see how this is working? What's happening to all of you? Right now are you going, oh my gosh, I'm depleted. Dying. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm depleted and no amount of food I could eat is going to replete me. Trust me, if you think you're going to get everything from the food you eat, you are dramatically off track. And we have many people who say that, right? Oh, I eat a whole, whole food diet. I eat plant-based. I eat so well. I don't need to take supplements. Well, then why do you not feel awesome? Because if you didn't need to replete, you would feel awesome and you probably wouldn't give me your evening to come sit here and talk with me. Yes or yes? yes? Right? So here's the thing. We're all depleted and we're all not repleting enough to keep our bodies working the way that they should. Now, a lot of people will say, can you ever get my body better enough so that I can make my own hormones and I don't need hormones again? I don't know. Now, if you're in your 20s, I hope not to have to treat you with hormones. Although I know a little bit about you personally and I won't bring it up, but some 20 year olds are not going to be able to have their own hormones ever produced within their bodies and I'm going to have to work with them. But when I work with a young person, and my one patient today was 15, I've got an 11, 12, 13 year old, I've got 80 year olds, I work with every age. When you're young, I want to heal your body and restore it back to its best function. That's what functional medicine does. It's looking at your physiology and you as part of this triangle and restoring what's going on for you so that your body can work at its best. But in your 40s, your chances of making enough testosterone like a 20 year old is far more greatly diminished. That being said, there's some genetic influence to how your body functions. The thing is your genes are not your destiny and that about 80% of your genetic coding can be turned on or off based on the environment we put your genes in. You asked about anti-aging. We have technology that will stop your skin cells genes from aging and will turn on the youth gene on the outside. So we can make you look and stay young forever. And we can do that on the inside, because you said inside and outside. How we do that on the inside is we understand how genes turn on and off and what environment we need to create within your body's biochemistry to slow down aging, put you back to your best function, and you don't have to be that diabetic and that hypertensive and that high cholesterol person that your parents are. You don't have to. My mom had two different types of cancer, colon cancer and breast cancer. My mom has fibromyalgia, depression, um, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. I don't know what she doesn't have. And her sister has stage four breast cancer at this moment. Their mother had uterine cancer. Their aunt had breast cancer. That's my family genetics. And on my dad's side, there's obesity, high cholesterol, heart disease, strokes, heart failure, and diabetes. I did not come from the best gene pool. But I can tell you this much. If you look at my, I'm one of seven grandchildren to my grandparents, and I'm the only one that's in the shape I'm in. I'm, I'm, I don't take any medication at all and I have no diagnosed diseases other than I have no thyroid which I lost in my 20s. Right? Back then I didn't know what I know now. So what am I saying to you? I decided that my genes are not going to be my destiny. I think I look pretty good for 45 and I think I'm in really good shape for 45. And no I didn't dip my whole body in the time machine yet but I will. Right? But jokes aside this is the work it takes to get these results but this is it right here understanding that there's so many things that affect my biochemistry and I need to take steps to make sure that one now this is important write it down reduce your toxic burden reducing your toxic burden means attending to all of those things that I mentioned earlier on so 
Just a quick recap, it's your food, it's your home care, it's your body care, it's your medicines, it's your health habits that you think are good for you, like buying all those supplements that have additives and coloring and fillers and who knows what. Right? It's renovating. It's where do you live? It's the air inside your home, the air outside your home. What are all of your exposures when you travel into a hotel room, when you're eating out versus eating in? It's your food. It's the dyes. It's the herbicides, the pesticides, everything that we talked about. Right? So you have to work on lowering your toxic burden. At this moment, I'm also going to teach you about something called xenobiotics and in particular xenoestrogens. This is critical because I'm seeing a lot of young men now have lower than normal testosterone for their age. I'm working with a pile, do you know what, like five, six, seven people in the last couple of few months uh, in their 20s with testosterone levels that are like that of what a 60 year old should be. Right? And the question is why? So we have to think, one, they're running out of all the things that they need to keep making what they need, so they're depleted. Many of them are high exercises, high stress, and work in highly toxic professions. But then we have this thing about xenoestrogens, and xenoestrogens are external chemicals and toxins that act like estrogen on the body. Now, men have estrogen and they need it. You cannot give a man zero estrogen and expect him to live healthy and young. Not going to work. So men have estrogen, women have lots of estrogen. Men have lots of testosterone and women have less testosterone, but they have it too. And it's all about me helping you keep it in balance. So if you're running out of what you need, you've blocked your hormone receptors with all these toxic molecules that I mentioned, and then you have uh, xenobiotics coming into your body, can you see what a toxic sea is existing inside of you? Like you're bathing in a sea of toxins and your entire biochemistry is getting toxic because your poor liver just can't keep up. There's way too many things coming in and its ability to shove them out is diminished and it can only handle so many things. And now instead of, you know, 10,000 new toxins in the world, we've got 104,000 new toxins in the world. And guess what? Your genes have not evolved to cope. Your genes are exactly the same as caveman. In 50 years, your genetics have not evolved at all. But this is why patients can say to me, but my 90-year-old grandma is still so active and independent and everything. Well, guess what? When she was little, she ate pure food that was in season that her genes could cope with. And she didn't have 104,000 chemicals that her genes had never seen before. Does that make sense? And so we're bringing children and grandchildren into this world right now and throwing them into this toxic broth. And we wonder why we have autism and ADHD and behavioral issues and we're seeing things that we've never seen before in epidemic proportions. Autoimmune disease dramatically on the rise and we've had it. Right? 20 year olds being diagnosed with autoimmune disease. Why? We're bathing in a sea of toxins, and I'll tell you this much, your immune system, write this one down, your immune system is critical to protecting you from aging. It's in your skin, and it protects all of your aging processes in your body. You can't make cancer, you can't make a heart attack, you can't make autoimmune disease, you can't get sick if you have a healthy immune system. But eczema, asthma, allergies, all immune system dysfunction, hives, food sensitivities. Notice how we can't eat peanuts anymore. We can't wear perfumes anymore, right? All of these things are related. So this is what I want you to know about your immune system. Cortisol and stress impact your immune system. It can impact it whether it's too high or too low. Toxins, whether they're organic pollutants and all these chemicals I've mentioned or toxic heavy metals, they impact and suppress your immune system function. And nutrient depletions. When I work with patients, I'm always scanning and searching for immune system function or dysfunction. And what we're doing in our practice is looking at predictive autoantibodies. Don't worry about what that is. Just know that it means that we can tell you that in the next 10 years, you're going to be at high risk for an autoimmune disease. When we do all of your lab work, 
We're looking to prevent and to predict and prevent diabetes, the next biggest thing going on, heart attacks, early markers for heart disease, working with a lady who's missed her third appointment because she doesn't want to know why she should quit smoking, right? And she's got all the markers for having a heart attack and she's in the right age group. Women in their 50s, more women are dying of heart disease than they are of breast cancer. But we're not talking about that. No, we talk about it here. We're wanting to educate you. We want you to start early, know your risks, and then do something about it because it's all preventable if you find it at the right time. Make sense? So again, you age because your hormone levels are declining. When your cortisol is declining, it's not protecting your immune system. You age because your hormone levels are declining. When you're making less testosterone, you're aging. Your risk for heart disease is going up. Your risk for prostate cancer is going up. Your risk for dementia is going up. You're gaining weight, so your whole cardiometabolic system is going off because you're dropping your testosterone levels. And Chris, dear, it's supposed to be normal. Getting old is supposed to be so normal, right? No, wrong. It's not normal. You can do something about it. Not only can you reduce your toxic burden, we're going to teach you how to eliminate the toxins that are collecting within your body. Your body is creating fat stores. Notice how many people are on a diet perpetually. Do you know anybody like that? Do you know people who have to, and maybe you're one of them, you have to work out extra hard and you're pissed off because your friends can eat what they want and work out less and still get results and here you are slogging away and not getting the same result. And I was that person, right? A size extra large for goodness sake. Counting my calories and exercising and doing everything right and I was just growing and growing and growing. What did I not know? Told you about my genetics. My mom comes from a family of poor detoxifiers. Their genes that control detoxification are all abnormal. They collect toxins. That's why there's so much immune system dysfunction in my mom's side of the family. And the toxins that collect give them fibromyalgia and mental health issues because they're not detoxifying and they can't methylate, which I'll talk about later if I have a few minutes. And so they just end up with all of these issues. And I moved from South Africa into a small farming community right between a lumber mill and a pulp and paper mill, two of the most toxic industries you can find. And then in my little farming community was a little Monsanto hub where everybody was spraying with Roundup. And I developed asthma. And I developed autoimmune disease. And I developed all the markings of fibromyalgia and all the fatigue and all this accelerated aging. I had 15 migraines a month. I was exhausted. I was toxic. But I didn't know what that was. But I was breathing all this stuff. And I was a clean freak. So I used Mr. Clean and bleach and you name the chemical. I had it in my house because I was a germaphobe. And then I stopped being able to wear perfume and I couldn't fill gas in my car because I would get nauseated and headachy and <coughs> everything bothered me. And I still didn't know what that meant. But it meant I was just a poor detoxifier. My genes didn't allow me to process out toxins and my belly fat was growing and growing and growing because my body couldn't cope with the toxic burden. And I was creating fat stores because my body and all its wisdom, and that's what most people are going through right now, 45% of people have this MTHFR gene SNP that doesn't allow them to detoxify well. And what were they doing? What was I doing? I was making fat and all my toxins were getting stored in my fat and my body was not gonna let go of that fat because the fat was protecting me from feeling worse than I was. I felt like shit already. Sorry, no kids here. Are you okay with that word? You've heard that word before, right? But I felt awful and I didn't know what was going on. So thank God for functional medicine, which saved my life, saved my functioning and made me younger too. So you all know people who struggle with these things. They're working out extra hard. They're doing everything right and they're not getting results and, and it's not feeling good to them. And some of you are perpetually dieting and doing extreme things, right? And it's not working. Or it's working, but it's frustrating because you've got to work harder than everybody else you know. So we lower our toxic burden 
and then we eliminate toxins. And the best thing I have is the metabolic optimizer, which is a complete detox kit for all my patients. So when you start working with me, and even if you don't work with me, go home with it. It comes with a 28-day metabolic rejuvenation booklet. I teach you about all of the toxins, all of the steps you need to go through to start clearing out your biochemistry so that the hormones you have can work better. Make sense? And so there's 11 key things that it does. One, it contains all the cofactors for energy, for fat burning. It's a multivitamin. It's got a complete protein in a very easily digestible form. So your body doesn't have to do any work to digest it. It has anti-inflammatories and antioxidants. Remember that the more toxins you have in your body, the more free radicals you're creating. So you need more antioxidants to neutralize it. One of the ways aging of that nature with high free radical burden shows up other than immune system dysfunction and that is you look older than you are. And I'm seeing an incredible number of 20 some year olds and early 30 year olds who see Deanna shaking her head, nodding in agreement because she's seeing them. They're all looking years older than they are. And this is the solution, the metabolic optimizer. We have all of the key nutrients that your liver runs out of mm -hmm. because it's so busy trying to work so hard cleaning out toxins that it's now depleted and it can't do it anymore and your body's toxic burden is rising. So we've added all of those nutrients into this thing so that you can just have enough, be repleted to do the work of cleaning your biochemistry so the hormones you have can work. So our first step with every patient is to clean the biochemistry and remove the blockers from the receptors so the hormones can work. Make sense? Does anybody need a quick break? Like stand up, shake, yeah, let's do that. Let's stand up, shake our arms, and then sit down again. Because I gotta make sure that I cover this next bit before you have to go. Okay, so if your body's a Lamborghini, what kind of fuel would you put in it? Premium gas, yes. Nothing less than premium gas. Right? But what will happen if your gas line is not clean and clear? Does it matter what kind of gas you put in the tank? Is your Lamborghini going to drive the way you want? Is it going to handle those curves and go as fast as you want to? If your gas line is not optimal, it's blocked. And if your air filter and your fuel filter, so your kidneys and your liver, aren't working well, what happens to the Lamborghini? Can you drive it? No. I mean, you can, but not as well. And then when it's really plugged, it's going to pull over on the, you're going to pull it over on the roadside and be stuck. So how many of you in your health lives have found that there are times in your life where you just feel so stuck with your health? The energy is gone. Your motivation has gone. You just don't feel as good as you should. And what do humans do? They push through or your body in all its wisdom will actually crash you for three or four days. You'll stay in bed then you'll start to recover and then you carry on again. But that's not the ideal solution, right? Is all that making sense? So what am I talking about here? I'm talking about your liver and I'm talking about your gut. So does it matter what gas we put if we haven't looked at the liver and the gut? So what I said earlier, you are a genetically and biochemically unique individual and I cannot treat you the same way as her or her or him. Right? In the old days, only your genes and your nutrients shaped your biochemistry. Today, you have 104,000, 110,000 new chemicals you're being exposed to on a daily basis. Okay, maybe you're not being exposed to each and every single one of them. But I mean, think about your clothing, all the dyes in it. 
Think about textiles, your furniture, the flame retardants, the everything that's added into everything you touch. Like, doesn't it make you want to just be like Michael Jackson and have that little bubble? Wasn't he on to something? Yes. He was not crazy. And now we have our genes that haven't evolved, the environment that's evolving more rapidly than ever, and we're not coping. So your liver becomes critical to balancing hormones. Your liver health and function and optimization. And the enzyme system is called the cytochrome P450 enzyme system that we obsess about. It's the same thing that all your drugs go through. So your pharmacist, your doctor has heard about this, but they haven't considered that in your water supply, there's antidepressants and birth control pills and all kinds of things. There's a, a documentary called the RBC Red Water Project, Blue Water, pff, Blue Water Project. I watched that. Ask anyone, I will drink wine before I drink water in a restaurant. If they don't have bottled water and they don't let me bring my own in, I just have a glass of wine. Because when you watch that, like in North, North America, that thing, because your water is cleaned for bugs. It's not cleaned for how many million people are on Viagra, on antidepressants, on statin drugs. And they have pharmacists and biochemists telling you that they're finding it in the water. Then we wonder about all these interactions people have and these intolerances and weird things going on. Something as simple as your water is affecting your biochemistry. And forget alkalinizing it if you haven't even purified it. You know, everyone's like, I drink alkaline water. What do you think? Will you endorse me for selling this thing that clean, you know, makes water alkaline? I don't give a crap about alkaline water if you haven't filtered it properly. Right? Because it's polluting your biochemistry. Does that make sense? So everything is affecting your liver and your biochemistry. And then you get that prescription from the doctor and it's affecting your liver and your biochemistry. And then you have stress and it's affecting your liver and your biochemistry. So on that note, your liver is part of the system called your digestive system. And I'm hoping that you can see right now that that is critical to getting the gas to the engine to drive your Lamborghini. So if I want your cells to make more energy, if I want your cell receptors to respond to hormones better, if I want all your enzymes that are involved in the biochemical reactions of hormones working, then I have to make sure that the nutrients I give you to replete you get to the cells where they're needed. And so I have to look at everything in between that path from A to B or else I'm not going to help you feel better. And if I haven't repleted you, can I safely give you hormones? The answer is no. Because every time I give you a hormone, bioidentical or not, it's trying to work in your body through a chemical reaction that can't work because you don't have the right nutrients, the right ingredients. Make sense? Notice this. Hmm. in the greater scheme of this whole thing. So people coming to me for hormones. I want my hormone prescription. Deanna, just book me in with the doctor. I want a prescription today because that's all I need. I don't need to do anything else. Well, do you think I'm going to do that? Because I came up with this doodling when I was trying to figure out what was missing from my practice, right? I finished the story now that I was sitting there wondering what was not working. And what was not working was I was looking at hormones only, and I wasn't looking at it in context of everything and every part of who you are. And that's why we have meditation and mindfulness training and mindset training. We want to help you with your past and your present in order to help you balance hormones. Because if you don't settle this part, I'm constantly facing depletions and I'm constantly having difficulty balancing hormones because they can't be used as efficiently. Does that part make sense? So I use this little analogy. I used to be in a 10 year relationship before I met my husband. And there was something that would drive me crazy. And I, I said I was a germaphobe, but I was a neat freak too. And my cushions had to be a certain way and the counters had to be clean before we went to bed. And I just liked a really orderly house. 
and it didn't matter if I came home at three in the morning from delivering a baby I had to do all those things before I went and I'd always see his socks on the floor and it would make me crazy like to the point where at some nights I would just drag his ass out of bed and make him pick his own damn socks up and put them in the laundry basket right because I was just like one more time and, and then one day I st- and I thought why does this bother me? But I just let it go because I didn't have the personal development at the time. You know, I've spent a lot of time working on my mind and my past and how things affect people in general and what we have to do for changing our human behavior and embracing our health rather than resisting all the work it takes. So (coughs) dirty socks would make me crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I would lose my marbles. And then you you gotta think like, really? Like really, they're just socks. Tell them in the morning or just pick them up and put them in the laundry basket. But basically I was over here losing my mind over something that happened 10 and 15 years before because this guy would leave his damn socks on the floor. And this guy disrespected me to the point where he would never do that kind of stuff. It was a woman's job to clean and do this and do that and blah, 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 blah. And so that was just how it was. And so all of that rage, all of that anger, all of that stuff, I was actually over here and acting like I'm over here, but I'm really over here and I have none of that stuff from there over here with me. But I acted like I did. Does that make sense to you? Can you relate to this? Do you ever get triggered by something and then you're going, (gasps) so you have your own dirty socks in your background, right? You have your own dirty socks happening right now. There are things that you haven't solved and resolved from way back when. And it's all acting up here now as if it's today. So can you see why it's so critical that I built in the stress impact assessment for you, a meditation training session for you? And I'm introducing you to someone who can help you with the dirty socks. What we know is, and the science proves this, that sometimes you don't even have to get rid of the dirty socks. But there's strategies that can retrain your brain to react differently. So how cool is it that we can change how we react to the things that cause us grief and stress and trauma without actually doing eight years of psychotherapy? And we can u- utilize these neurobiological strategies that are proven in science to work and we have it all here at Better For You. It's part of your program. We have two of us doctors who write hormones, but look how little a piece of the puzzle it is. Ask Deanna, before I ever write hormones, every patient on our program within three to four weeks is 40 to 70% better than when they walked in the door and they haven't even got a hormone prescription. Because we have naturopathic medicine in our team and we're working on your biochemistry. We have functional nutrition and digestive health experts on our expert on our team working with you to feed your body for your hormone levels. Not his hormone levels, not her hormone levels, but your levels. <coughs> right? And we're cleaning your biochemistry, we're feeding you, we're putting the right fuel in the gas tank, and then we're making sure it gets to the engine, and then we're getting you ready for hormone balance. And at this point, when I give you hormone balance, today I had a patient, she's been with me eight years, and the first thing's out of her mouth, I wrote it on a chart, right? She said, I want to thank you for changing my life. That you did everything the right way with me, My doctor wants to take me off these hormones because he thinks you're crazy. Because he says my tests were always normal and and this is a placebo effect and I'm wasting all this money at your clinic because it really doesn't work. And she said, I have never felt better. From my mood, I'm less cranky. I cope with stress better. I've dropped some weight. I've coped with things like I could never cope. This is average stories we hear from patients. But that's why we have a very specific step-by-step process and I don't change it. I don't jump the gun and write you a hormone. I don't just, you know, it's so specific because over the last 13 years of doing this, this is what I know works. Okay, so you got all of the key stuff and she'll bring you the rest. Okay, awesome, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was awesome. What aha did you get? What what one thing did you learn tonight that you didn't know before or perspective? 
I'll pretty much have been aware of all, all this stuff. It's just a matter of tying it all together and getting it all in one. Seeing how it works together, right? Yeah. Because people try a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that, but there's no one thing that solves everything. Yeah. It's about how it all fits together to give you that result. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. What did you get? I didn't know that it was a whole thing. Because I know that I got a blood test done, right? And I was like, look, I'm just going to look at my hormones. We're going to figure this out. And I didn't know. No, that was just to find out about your skin health and if there's anything aging you faster. Yeah. But it doesn't give you the full picture, no. Yeah, yeah a little step-by-step -step thing to add to the process now. Yeah. Mona. Uh, for me, I came here specifically because I'm aware of all this stuff. All of it. And I have it for years. My sister passed away three years ago from cancer. Uh, she was stage four at age 28, lived 14 years. She did all of this. So I learned a lot through her. Um, the frustration is that I feel like I've done so much of this stuff simultaneously, but I feel like nothing's working exactly what you're saying. I'm doing everything right. I already, like, I don't put anything on my skin. I, like, I'm very aware of all this stuff, but there's a missing, there's a couple missing pieces that I'm not aware Always of. something and missing. And I'm sure it's because there hasn't been, never been proper testing done to diagnose what the actual issue where the blocker is to be able to like I can do a bunch of stuff generally but there's nothing specific that's been um, pinpointed to make me actually feel better and to exactly what you're saying go out wow, um, you know you're doing your thing you're exercising you're eating right you're gonna I'm a vegetarian I eat, but I eat fish and it's just all the stuff on the list that just and so I I'm to fruition so it's really frustrating so I'm going to say something. You're not doing everything right according to what we're going to say to you because vegetarians are very depleted. And it's not always the most, op even though people think that the data is there. No, and, and we have lots of, we're working with a couple right now and we're working with a young 20 year old. She's an ethical vegetarian. She will not eat something that's been killed, right? But right there is where you start by saying, am I feeding my body the right things for my hormones? Right? right. Or I'm is my biochemistry or what am I needing to add that is probably first more critical than doing a whole bunch of private testing. And I'm only saying this because there's, there's only three fully, um, there's three clinics in Calgary that I believe do functional medicine the way it's supposed to be done and the, the right way. Right? And two of them cost you between six and ten thousand dollars to walk into. And it's a ton of private testing and every single test you can imagine under the sun. And for me, I don't do that. Why? Because you will find that I will talk to you for an hour. You'll fill in how many pages? 30 some pages of paperwork before you come to me. We will look at all of that, all of this, and put it together and start with the most logical things that after 13 years I can make a pretty educated assessment of you and tell you what to start with first. That's not to say you don't get testing, but then we do blood testing and we see what you have. We see how your biochemistry is. We see how your hormones are. Do you have any? Are they there, but you just can't use them? And we make an assessment and we create a plan and then we strategically choose which tests to diagnose where the blocks are, but it's in a very uh, well thought out process so that you're not wasting six thousand ten thousand dollars because if i did ten thousand dollars of testing am i going to find things wrong with you yes but if i talk to you for an hour i can find out what's wrong with you too yeah. so the testing is critical to our process but it's not all done up front there are things that we will do to tweak so i'm not eating meat perfectly okay with us you yeah. never have to but it might mean that we need to do a different test to look at what other nutrients are deficient and add them in because we said if you're depleted nothing's gonna work right and so it's all about repletion first perhaps it's your gut perhaps it's your liver perhaps it's something simple there so we don't start with the big testing we start with how is your body working and how do we get it to work better and then how do we top it up based on your beliefs 
and your current health habits and what little tweaks we can make. So we would never say to a vegetarian, you have to eat meat, but 99.99% .99 of the time, if you're vegetarian, that's the first thing that's not working. And it goes against what people are reading, the whole China study, the whole blah, blah, blah. But for all, and Michelle's laughing because she has all the data and all the studies and all the science, and she's an absolute geek when it comes to that. But all, all that science shows us is what do we need to add to you. We have, the si we have the technology and the ability to still replete you without you eating things that go against your wishes. Right? You just have to be open to it. So I was just saying to you that it, it's sometimes not as complicated as checking your genetics and all of those things. It could be something just simple because you were just missing that p key piece of information and that key piece of intervention. So yeah, so it is frustrating. But the nice thing is that when patients come to us, they're doing a lot. They're already doing a lot. So it's easy for them to do one or two things extra. We don't usually get the person eating McDonald's and pizza coming in here. So for you, it's not going to be that difficult. It's going to be just so sweet to look at you and say, oh, just do this or add that. And then, right? What did you get? Lots of, lots of putting the puzzle pieces together. What was an aha for you? seeing the full cycle because you know you know what I went through like I was diagnosed with Graves' disease they said I had to go on these like, like toxic toxic drugs and then I took them and then they said they misdiagnosed me and that there was nothing wrong and I stopped nursing because of it like it was a nightmare and so just seeing all of that and learning and you know I already knew I didn't trust like modern medicine after that so seeing that someone like you goes through everything is just so refreshing. Well, thank you. Yeah, because it's really important. I think so. Absolutely. But I also think that you know, you can't leave any piece of the puzzle out. And we've had patients say to us, I don't need to go to my stress impact assessment. I already do this and I already do that. Well, how's that working for you? Why not be open to adding what we have to add to your process, right? And, and the point is, the process is still the most comprehensive process you can get. Because you see everybody on our team when you join us. You get your nutrition visits, you get your naturopathic visits, you get your acupuncture visits, you get, you know, and I didn't mention acupuncture. Acupuncture is absolutely incredible because it can help you in your stress, your stress response, it can help you with hormones, it can help your biochemistry. The most important thing it can help you with is your gut and your digestion. <coughs> so talking about that, today I want to cover off on something called leaky gut. Who's heard of it and wants to try and teach the class with me? No, that, that's the more extreme thing, um, kind of like a diverticulitis, diverticulosis that gets so bad that you end up in the hospital with that. So I want to talk about something completely missed by all of conventional medicine, even though it exists in our medical journals and there's terms for it. So have you heard of leaky gut? Are you attending to it? So you'll add to it as we're teaching then. So your gut is a tube and there's one cell layer protecting your outside from your inside. Because if you think about it, this is the outside, right? Which goes all through you, so your outside is on the inside, all the way out of you, right? So you have this tube with one cell layer separating you from the external world. Say, wow. Yeah. Right? Now we'll look at it in a sort of cross section. We're supposed to have tight junctions between each cell, so exactly what you said. Your digested and partially digested food and your feces poop is not going to get inside of you. Right? And so, mm, no, I don't want to do that. I'll increase my gaps, okay? 
So there's your tube and there's the passage, right? What did I say that was really critical to aging earlier? I told you one system and I gave you three things that affected it dramatically. And those three things were nutrient depletions, cortisol, and toxins. So what system was I talking about? Who remembers them? You go back to your notes if you have to. Your immune system, right? Uh-huh. So I said that your immune system was most critical. More than 70% of your immune system is found where? Where's your immune system? Can I say the gut? Okay. That's a good guess. <laughs> most people say in your blood, in your lymph nodes, because that's what we think about. But more than 70% of your immune system is in your gut for the reason I just told you. There's one cell layer protecting your outside from the inside or your insides from the whole external world. And you think it's dramatic, but you have no idea what all is coming in at you. Every time you breathe, you talk, you swallow some air, you ate some food, you don't, I, honestly, it's disgusting, but things have sat on it, things have touched it. There are parasites and eggs and bacteria and all kinds of stuff. I was gonna say all kinds of shit going into your gut and coming out, but you know, that would have been punny. <laughs> but you get it, right? Like there's all the stuff going in and one cell layer protecting that from getting into you. So that's why most of your immune system sits around your gut. And then you have this blood vessel system. Deanna, I bet you you're listening with new ears and new eyes now, right? Mm -hmm. This part is just for you, darling. This is all just for you. So you have a very rich supply of blood vessels around your gut. Why? Why would you have a ton of blood vessels around your gut? Because it's your fuel line, and that's where the gas comes in to get to the engine. So does that make sense? Now, you're eating stuff, and it comes into your body, so you bit an apple. And you chewed it, and it starts the digestion process in your mouth, yes? Right? Salivary enzymes, breaking it down, and <clears throat> goes into your stomach. The hydrochloric acid breaks it down further. Your digestive enzymes come in. It all gets into some mush. And then in your small intestine, you start absorbing different nutrients. At this point now, it looks like little particles as part of a whole liquid smush. Right? Now, in a healthy, normal gut, what happens? Vitamin A or an antioxidant or whatever nutrient it is will go into the cell, right? Zinc, selenium, trace minerals, vitamin B, iron, I don't know, name it. It's coming out of your food and going into your body. Yes? Say yes. yes. And then it goes through your immune system first where your immune system looks at it and says, who are you? Right? And then your immune system goes, oh, you're vitamin A. You're okay. Off you go. Right? Your immune system looks at it and says, oh, you're a zinc particle or a piece of iron. Or I know what you are. You're an amino acid from the breakdown products of my meat that I ate. Off you go. So it goes into your blood system and then goes to wherever it needs to go. Got it? Say yes. Yes. But <clears throat> what happens if a piece of apple skin gets in here through a gap that's not supposed to be there, right? And now your immune system looks at it, what happens? Alarm bells start ringing. It says, oh my gosh, who are you? I ain't never seen a piece of apple before. See, because the apple piece should have passed out in your poop. 
It's only the nutrients that should have come through the cells, so those very specific cellular mechanisms that allow what's known and needed to come through. Everything else should go out. When a virus or a bacteria or a parasite comes through, your immune system knows what to do with that. You're an enemy, I'm going to kill you. Off you go, dead, done. And what are we doing? We're exposing our bodies to toxins and chemicals and gluten is a big one, alcohol is a big one, sugar is a big one, toxins is a big one. Stress, 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 big one. It's causing this thing called intestinal permeability. That is what the medical term is. Increased intestinal permeability. <coughs> we have gaps between the cells, whereas how it normally works is that there's channels that just open and close. So it opens to let certain things in and close. The rest of it goes through the cell wall and membrane by osmosis and other cellular processes, but there's also channels between these that open, let something in, and close. Gluten disrupts something in the zonulin channels. This is all brand new science in the last few years. And it keeps the channel open for six hours or more. And so for six hours, anything can pass through the now open channel and your immune system is bombarded with stuff it's never seen before. And it becomes a very confused. It was not designed to work on overtime like this. That's why we stop you from eating gluten. And the problem with gluten is the genetic modification, the changing of the gliadin molecule and the gluten particles, the roundup that's on it, the glyphosate. We know it affects intestinal permeability. So we want you to not eat it, especially if you have a family history of autoimmune disease or a personal history of autoimmune disease, if you have predictive antibodies for autoimmune disease, which I'm testing for you in your 20 tubes of blood that you get done when you come in, um, if you have a family history of cancer, if you have rashes, eczema, if you have all of these things going on, we will tell you, stop eating gluten first. Let's heal your gut so we can get the gas to the engine. Is that making sense? So gluten and stress management are the two big things we want you to do off the bat to deal with intestinal permeability. The consequence of increased intestinal permeability and these open channels is a very confused immune system. It no longer knows self from not self and that partly leads to the uh, exacerbation or the, if you have a predisposition to an autoimmune disease, it's going to allow it to continue to manifest. And a hyper-challenged immune system is leading to food sensitivities. I am not talking about food allergies. A food allergy, you eat, you break out in a hive, you have this reaction, you take an EpiPen, you take Reactin, Claritin, whatever, and that's an allergic reaction. We are talking about food sensitivities in a different way. Your body's creating antibodies and certain immune cell reactions because it's seeing food particles and it no longer knows what they are. And the, when we see people with 6, 8, 10, 12, 15 food sensitivities on their testing, what we're saying is, oh dear, you have a very leaky gut. Your immune system is so confused. Look how many foods it's reacting to. I don't believe in spending money unnecessarily on testing, so the first thing we do is put you on something called an elimination diet. We we'll pull out the most allergenic foods over years. We found out what the worst ones are for your immune system. We pull them away. People who have had stubborn uh, metabolism that won't help, the, you know, no matter what they do, they don't lose weight. Um, they're going to start to respond to an elimination diet. At the same time, we put them on the metabolic optimizer. If you want to bring me the jar, please. So we put them on the metabolic optimizer. Like I told you, we're giving the liver stuff to remove toxins. We're giving you stuff that heals the leaky gut. So in here is all the nutrients that we know help seal up the leaks and help you regenerate healthy gut lining cells. So we start to calm this whole reaction down with one single step. 
So we've got a liver that's being supported, toxins that are being shifted out better, repleting you and your nutrient stores. We're healing the leaky gut. We're giving you the antioxidants to neutralize all the free radicals because these are very sensitive cells and they're being replaced constantly within you know, 24, 48 hours, you're regenerating these enterocytes, the lining of your gut cell. And so this is the food and the fuel for that. So when you come see us, we're looking at your scores, we're looking at your foods, we're looking at where you're at, and then we're starting to heal your gut, pull out the foods that could, could be challenging you, cleaning out your biochemistry, and getting you ready for hormone balance. But you can't do the hormone balancing until all these steps are done. Does all this make good, clear sense now? Do you understand why you cannot get hormones on your first visit, yes? or yes, right? Critical, but there's something even more critical I'm gonna to go to now. What is dysbiosis? Who knows? What is your microbiome? Good in your gut. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Okay. So this is the area where we have the largest amount of medical science advances to date. So you know about the Human Genome Project? Mapping out this ge genetic map of humans and looking at how your genes can influence your health, right? But more important than that, because I said you bathe your cells and they turn on or off in the environment that you put them in. So your genes are inside your cell, and inside your cell is your biochemistry. And so depending on the biochemistry inside and outside the cell, you can turn on good or bad genes or turn off good or bad genes. So more important than the gene is whether they're turned on or off, yes? But the microbiome is fascinating. You have how many cells in your body? Billions? Try again. More? More. Trillions of cells in your body, right? And you know that this body you have today is not the body you had 10 years ago. Did you know that? So nothing, you, Jennifer, are only called Jennifer, but you are not the same Jennifer that was here 10 years ago. Only you think that and the people that th around you think that and they're all wrong. Because not only are you wiser and more mature and evolved, there's not one part of you that hasn't completely regenerated. Completely. Think about it. Your red blood cells are brand new every 120 days. But every single part of you is regenerating at a different rate. But there's none of you today here that was here 10 years ago. Isn't that nice? When you think you recreate yourself, and you're entirely a new being. But all 100 trillion cells in your body are outnumbered because you have 100 times the number of, of cells in your body as bacteria in your gut. And I don't know how to say that less confusing. There are 100 times more bacteria in your gut than there are cells in your body. Say, holy like, wow, right? Oh, you guys are sleepy. So that is your microbiome. These hundred trillion cells that are in your mouth, in your intestine, in your colon, and they are critical to your health. In fact, some scientists say, are we the host or are we the parasite? Because there's a hundred like there's millions of different genetic material, bacteria and yeasts and parasites in your gut. They have a varied genetic profile. We have one genetic profile all around it. And so they ask, who's the host and who's the parasite? Because maybe we're the parasite and maybe that's the host. But why is this important? These bacteria train your immune system. 
and you're constantly upsetting them, how are you upsetting these bacteria? What kills bacteria? Right, and from absolutely perfect in your own body, your white blood cells are going to go, your army is going to go, yes. But what are you doing and taking that can kill bacteria? What does your doctor give you when you go? Oh, antibiotics. antibiotics. But there's antibiotics in your meat, in your milk. I don't blame you for not eating meat. <laughs> fish is marginally better. Oh, that's open to debate now because the farmed fish and uh, the oceans and all. I, I, just, I just think I should be allowed to drink my shake every day and, and not have to eat. Mm -hmm. That would make my life so easy. By the time I look at, uh, oh, I love to cook and I love food and I love the wine that goes with my food. <laughs> so I have a problem. But we only eat grass-fed, grass-finished, humanely raised meat. Uh, cage-free, naturally raised eggs, uh, same for chicken, so we get them all in the same place, the same farmer, you can go to the farm and see how they do things, and um, we eat wild fish. Which farm is that? Grazed, right. Oh, we, we have a brochure for you. I don't get anything, I just love them because they're such a nice small farm. I'm paying extra for things that aren't really good for you. Yeah. yeah. You buy the good eggs and you're like, oh. You don't know, much. yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're just fabulous. And we'll give you their brochure because they deliver into Calgary every month and you just order a small, medium, large box kind of thing and it's fantastic because otherwise it's frightening. It's, it's still expensive, but it's more expensive to not eat the right things, right? Because when you're sick, when you got cancer, when you're not working, that is way more expensive than feeding your body the right way. Who would, who would agree with that? Yeah. Right? And so, no, I'm not going to put shit in my body. Sorry. I'm just not. And it's really important because only we get to control what, what we get out of our health. And we can complain all we want about having free health care and why do we have to pay here for health care. Well, how's the free health care working for anyone right now? We still have the highest incidence of cancer and heart attacks and strokes and dementia and autoimmune disease and the nursing homes no longer have space. Right? and arthritis and disability and fibromyalgia and depression and you've seen what's happened. How many of you know people with any one or many of those diseases? Diabetes, heart attacks, right? High cholesterol. And so people are getting sicker and sicker and sicker and we can complain and resist it and be angry all we want or we can take charge of our health and just do it. And the just do it is be educated first. That's why I give you my time on an evening to help you understand all of this and then teach you the most critical factors to how to get optimal hormone balance. And whether you choose to work with us through our programs and memberships or not is up to you. But I hope that your two hours here with me will give you the essential steps you need. Like don't eat gluten, manage your microbiome. Your microbiome is training your immune system. Your microbiome is affected by your diet and you can change it within two or three days. More than half your poop is dead bacteria. It has not much to do with all these other things. Yeah, sure, magnesium, thyroid, water, fiber, what you're eating, all that stuff. But if you don't get that more than half your poop is dead bacteria because you have these 100 trillion bacteria that you need to look after, then you won't get why probiotics are critical to your ongoing health. And I don't mean Activia yogurt. And I don't mean acidophilus because those things come with their own issues. My staff are trained to help you with your rotations and understanding what to take when and if you've had antibiotics in the last little while or in your distant past, what kinds of strains of bacteria do we need to replenish in you to maximize your health. Now remember what's more critical about your microbiome is that it helps you with hormone balance. So this is where I wanna to talk to you about the safety of bioidentical hormones. See, everybody thinks because it's natural to my body and Dr. Iyer creates the dose based on your ratios to all the other hormones in your body. So I don't give all of you the same dose because some of you will naturally have elevated estrogen. Some of you will be low in it if you're older than 50, none of you here. But you know, when my women are in their 50s and 60s and I'm doing that, I still have to look at the ratios. 
Then, if you're younger, I have to look at your progesterone because women in their 20s and 30s are now making less and less progesterone. Progesterone is important for cycle control. My 15-year-old today has cycles as heavy as a 50-year-old. As a you know when women come in and say, I'm, I'm bleeding out buckets? Well, she's 15 and bleeding out buckets. How does that happen? Xenoestrogens, xenobiotics, all of the stuff that's polluting the biochemistry. So she's acting like a menopausal, perimenopausal woman with the heavy bleeding, right? Shouldn't be at age 15, you know that. So we're making hormone imbalance younger and younger for the reasons that we talked about. And then we have a couple of things happening. When I give you hormones or your body makes hormones, you still have to process it through your liver, which means you need adequate repletion. You need adequate cytochrome P450 enzyme system function. That's why the metabolic optimizer is so important. And then your body needs to change your hormones or the hormones I give you into metabolites that work and that need to be excreted. Does that make sense? All hormones work like this, whether I give it to you or whether you make it on your own or whether Chris makes it on his own. And testosterone becomes estrogen in men. And estrogen needs to be excreted by a certain metabolic pathway. That MTHFR gene I talked about is important. And then your microbiome is also very important. Many of you women, if you've ever been given the birth control pill, you know you've been told if you take an antibiotic while on the pill, it's going to inactivate your pill. Beware. That's standard news, right? Why is it? Because the antibiotic is disrupting your microbiome and changing the estrogen and progesterone component of that pill. And if you translate that into how it affects your estrogen, what it means is that your microbiome affects your safe hormone metabolism of estrogen. And so when it comes to breast cancer risk, I have got to make sure your microbiome is optimal. I have got to make sure I understand how your body deals with estrogen and what it does with it. And based on what it does with it is how I safely prescribe and manage you going forward. If I cannot do this, I will not write hormones for you. If I cannot monitor your estrogen progesterone ratio, if I cannot monitor your metabolites, I'm not going to make you sicker than you were when you came in. You're already destined for a bad health outcome anyway. I don't need to help you get there faster. And so my job is to do everything safe and science-based. And what that requires is once we get into hormone balancing, we need at least once a year to test you for hormone safety because everything changes in your triangle. Remember that triangle? So nothing is stagnant. Tiana, come flip the page for me, please, honey. So nothing in that triangle is stagnant. So people say, but why can't I just get a prescription and come in once a year and see you? Well, does your stress stay the same? Do you never travel? Does things in your life never change? Does your gut function never change? Does, do you never have any stress? Do you never change all your exposures? It changes all the time. All the time. And so it changes how your body's handling hormones and it changes your cortisol and your life-sustaining hormones with your non-life-sustaining hormones and how they interact with each other. So when we get into that part of hormone rebalancing, it's a long-term relationship. That's why I saw a patient who's been here eight years. Yesterday I saw a patient who's been here since day one, 13 and a half years. But they're so well-trained now. They know what to tell me when they come in. It's quick, it's simple, and they know when things in their lives change, they come in sooner. So I'm going to show you this because this is critical. A hormone called, oh sorry, a molecule called cholesterol, cholesterol becomes progesterone. progesterone becomes cortisol. cortisol. Did we say it was important? Let's pause there. So let's look at cortisol. <clears throat> we said cortisol is your stress coping hormone, right? You asked about thyroid. And there's another hormone called insulin. Insulin is your fat fertilizing hormone. And what I want you to know is that this is called your metabolic triad. So I'm all about the triangles. And when cortisol changes, 
It slows down your metabolism and your thyroid function in many people. Sometimes it works a different way. But when cortisol changes, insulin changes, and then we wonder why we have so many problems with metabolism, and how can the same diet work for everyone? Because all three of you are completely different. Can all three of you have the exact same biochemistry? Not at mm. all. So if I gave you all the same diet, you can get temporary or somewhat the same result at the start, but then once everything starts to kick in, all your results are going to be different. You don't use the same hair shampoo, lip color, makeup. You don't, you don't use the same body care. You don't live in the same community. You weren't born in the same house. You didn't have the same exposures. Not all your mothers smoked. Not all of you were in a house with lead paint. Not, do you get it? You all didn't choose the same career and exposures and things. And then not all of you process stress the same way. So even if you were genetically identical twins, can you see how different you'll be? One of you might take everything personally and the other one of you could be really laid back and easygoing. One of you might work out all the time and one of you might not. One of you might have broken some bones and ended up with arthritis and the other one not. And so your entire triangle is different. And this is why customized personalized medicine is your only solution for maximum powerful health. Got it? And then you are now being told that cholesterol is important, not it has to be low. But we live in a society where all doctors tell you to drop your cholesterol to this level and that level and don't eat fat. And, and so how are you supposed to make progesterone and cortisol? Well, cortisol helps keep you calm. Progesterone helps keep you calm. Now go take the birth control pill and you've knocked out your body's natural progesterone and you've changed your synthetic estrogen balance and your, your microbiome is being affected and your liver is being affected. Do you see how complicated it is? Everything is connected to everything else and there's no one thing that's going to solve everything for you. That being said, how we feed you with the right amount of cholesterol and fat is going to make an important difference to your brain health and your hormone health. Then we have adrenal gland hormones that we have to look at because these are part of your life sustaining hormones and we have to look at that in balance with the rest of your hormones. Okay? But notice here that we have different types of estrogen. So there's estradiol, estrone, estriol. And there's little arrows that go back and forth, this way, that way. This is where my brain is working to prevent breast and prostate cancer. And this is affected by your liver and your microbiome and your gut function. So can I give you hormones on your first visit? Heck no. Heck no. And by the way, estrogen affects thyroid and thyroid affects estrogen, which nobody will tell you. So how am I going to fix your thyroid if I didn't get you all the way through that process? Because they all affect each other, right? And every time you fidget with one, you're affecting the other. Does that make sense? Completely. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Completely. And then there's safe and unsafe metabolites. And that's why you have to poop every day, twice a day or three times a day. I insist on it. If you want to be healthy, you have to poop. My 10-year-old, since he was seven, I get called to the bathroom. Mom, is my poop healthy? And I take a look and I go, what do you think? He goes, okay, do I need more digestive enzymes? Do I need some probiotics? What do I need? Do I, I go, you need, you need to just eat some vegetables or take your probiotics or whatever. And then some days, you know, I mean, he's a kid and my children would beat most adults in what they eat. Like their bad days are going to be the dream days for most people. My children drink green smoothies and they eat spinach and hummus and they are gluten-free and dairy-free. They've never had cow milk on purpose, right? Um, and, and people tell me it's impossible to change the diet or that they, they can't feed their children. Well, I've raised two children who don't get sandwiches for lunch. My right? Terribly. And, and, and they're so picky. And at some point, you're going to have to find that way to wean them into the healthy. You could be like me and just not have anything in the house. And someday they're going to eat because they can only be so hungry for so long. <laughs> I'm joking, but 
I've had many parents, sorry, I'll come to you one second, just I want to make this point. I've had many parents tell me it's okay for them to eat badly because they're young. No! No! When they're young, their body area is so much smaller. Their liver reserve is so much smaller. The ability to damage their tissue is so much higher. Heart disease is start, it starts in your, like between age 10 and 13. It doesn't start when you're 30. So how we feed our kids today matters to their health and the future. And I just tell my kids, like, you want it? When you move out, do whatever you want. My job is to help you be the best and the healthiest you can be. And you don't like it tough, but as long as you live with me, this is how it is. And they just got used to it. They actually think fish oil is a treat now. I can get them to do anything for more fish oil. So I'm an extremist. But go creep my Facebook page and find the videos that my kids have made teaching kids how to eat. It's just my personal name, Natasha Ayer. Um, so my son is two, and um, he loves his milk. But what alternative would you recommend? It's a myth that anybody needs milk. Yeah. In fact, the nurses' study proved that there's higher incidence of fractures and cancer in the people that drink milk. Yeah. So it's more of a soothing <clears throat> thing for him than anything, because I know that he doesn't really need dairy. So did you? Can you still nurse? No. No. Oh yeah, you told me you stopped in order to. Oh sorry. Yeah. Um, I make almond milk. I don't buy it. I mean, I do. So I made it. But I make it, and it's so it's quick like and easy. Yeah, but it's so quick. And then the leftover almonds I use as stuffing and fillers for my meatballs or my fish cakes or my, yeah, whatever. But almond milk is better? And make it because the one that you buy has no almonds in it. It's just full of junk. Okay. And it's got the carrageenan and all that stuff that adds to leaky gut. So really, you don't want to give it to them. Is the coconut milk like the organic coconut milk? Like I drink that with my, I have that with cereal. So all of it is better than milk, but none of it has what you need because they dilute and add so many other things that are adding to your leaky gut, and then they all have chemicals and preservatives in them, no matter which way you slice it. So you're just better off. It takes five minutes to make. Is it the hormones that are the bad in dairy milk? Uh, everything. It's, it's, it's from a cow. It's not even bio. It's, it's cow milk is for cows. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, breast milk is for humans. It's yeah. Yeah. It's, kind of yeah, it's just bad. Yeah, okay. I mean, I have lots of data and things to show you and share with you, but for now it's just bad. Yeah, okay. So I would just switch to a nut milk. Okay. And if you can find sheep milk, it's closer to bioidentical. So on the odd occasion, I will treat my kids to sheep milk cheese. Okay. Just for something different. Get, like we're pure paleo, right? So it's kind of difficult. And right now, our little one has just such a low appetite that we're trying to get his calories up. So, you know, there's some things that I will that's, do, like add cheese. Yeah, that's with my son, too. He Lots of coconut oil, coconut meat. milk from a can. Okay. So that fat on top says it's real. Okay. And you can make your own coconut milk, just unsweetened. So you make all your nut milks the same. I have a video on our YouTube channel. You have to scroll down a bit. I made it maybe two years ago. But I just show you how quick and easy yeah, it is. So it's uh, Better Metabolism TV is the YouTube channel. And then when you work with us in our clinic, we have uh, a clinic membership site. So we have all your documents, information. It's not perfect, but as I think of things that I want you to have access to, past webinars, videos, trainings, documents, how-tos, food lists, uh, what is gluten, how to avoid it, where to find sugar, all of that's on the membership site for our patients. Because I think that education is key to getting you your results, right? And so uh, just part of our service, we don't charge you anything for it, but we have a clinic membership site. And so you have resources. And then every, yeah. And then so every um, second Monday, I seat myself here and I'm open to patients coming in who are members of the clinic. And you come in and you ask questions. How do you make nut milk? I didn't understand your video. Talk to me more about this microbiome and the dysbiosis. Hmm? What do your kids eat? What do my kids eat? Uh, and I'll get them to make more videos now that they're older. We just got out of it. For a year, they were just all over it, like, you know, because I make ice cream and I come up with all these cool recipes. And they're very 
decided opinions on food. Uh, I wonder where it comes from. But, you know, and so they, my, my little one, when he was seven, would take the most disgusting supplement ever. It was bitter. And he would, I would put it in water and he would gulp it. And I'd say, Kaelin, how did you do that? And he goes, make a video so I can teach your patients. And he tells you in his cute little voice that, you know, it might taste horrible, but if it's good for you, you should just do it. Because after the third time, it doesn't taste bad at all. It's a horrible taste. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you have? Deanna will go through it and I, I'll tell you about it. But let me just tell you what dysbiosis is. So dysbiosis is disruption of your microbiome. It's an upset of the hierarchy of different bacteria. So an optimal microbiome is where there's a certain balance between good and bad bacteria, because not everything in your gut's good, but it's how do they live in harmony together. Now, if you have leaky gut, you're gonna get some of these bacterial byproducts getting into your body and disrupting your biochemistry even further. Make sense? And so that's why leaky gut is so important because we, we want these bacteria in your gut, but we don't want them in your body. We want their byproducts to leave you. We don't want it to get into your body. And so looking after intestinal permeability is crucial. And that's why the elimination diet and the metabolic optimize. We wanna heal those leaks. We wanna fix the microbiome. We wanna heal the inflammation. We wanna stop the immune system um, challenge and we want to start healing. When we do that, our next step can be hormone balancing. No, next step is biochemistry, cleaning it up and preparing it, and then the third step is balancing hormones. So in our, in our clinic program, there's, the entry level is called First Steps to Wellness. The, there is another option which mm -hmm. I can tell you about. It's not my favorite. I don't think it gives you any great value, but it's available. Um, so you get a health history. So that's, you know, you fill all your paperwork, then you come sit with me, we talk for about an hour. I, I, I make an assessment of you from all of your paperwork, all of your history, all of your stuff. We come up with a plan if you need the elimination diet, the detox, the, you know, biochemistry prep. We do all of that, get started, get a plan going. Off you go, you get your labs. You meet with Michal, our functional nutritionist. And she's gonna start prepping you for healing your leaky gut. And then the next step is us looking at your cortisol, thyroid, insulin triad, your metabolic triad, and how to eat for that. Um, you work with our naturopath because he's gonna work on your biochemistry and how to optimize it and work with the dysbiosis. Because these are critical steps, yes? And if you're missing these pieces, how are we gonna balance hormones? Now you could ask me why I don't do that, but you'd be waiting weeks and months for me to do all this work with you. And you can tell, we were supposed to have 12 people here tonight, four of you showed up. Three canceled within an hour of this workshop or two hours of this workshop, it's ridiculous. People just don't value education anymore. But I can tell you that I refuse to work with people if they can't take the time to learn things. So the program got expanded and built around education because people will show up for a visit. They won't show up like this. And then we work on your biochemistry, so you get naturopathic visits. Acupuncture is amazing. It works on so many different levels <coughs> to start giving you immediate results while you're waiting for your lab work, which takes a while to book and get and analyze, and then you come in. Your labs are discussed in two parts. So I look at your life-sustaining hormones and the ones most relevant to the first part. We start working on that, and then we meet again, and then we start looking at the next part. Okay, because one, it's overwhelming. If I spent an hour and a half talking to you about all your labs, you remember the first five minutes, the last five minutes. So you noticed I was talking with you a lot. Did you, did you notice I keep asking you, what did you get? What did you get? What did you learn? What, uh, say, aha, say, wow. Why? You will remember more from this two hours than you've ever remembered from any other two hour talk you've been to. Can you tell that already? Like you're digesting the information. It's sticking with you. You can go home and repeat it. Yes. So in the visits, we have to keep them short and targeted because people just forget or they get overwhelmed and then they just don't know what to do and then they're paralyzed and they can't move forward. 
Um, so you get your two nutrition, your two naturopathic. You come in, you go through, and, and we stagger it, right? And then we've also got IV nutritional therapy, so some detox support for helping you through the detox phase, neutralizing those free radicals. Mm -hmm. We have IV nutritional repletion so that we can top you up faster, especially the leakier your gut, we need to replete you so that when I need to balance your hormones, I can do it quickly. Like you don't want me to take six months before I balance your hormones, right? Like you're coming, you want some results pretty quick. The quickest I can do it is, you know, maybe four, six weeks, depending on how good a patient you are. Um, we ha also have a functional uh, medicine consultant who deals with supplements because we do use a lot of supplements and so she'll sit and talk to you about what you're on what are you taking why are you taking it you're feeling overwhelmed then you ask her but we don't recommend you just stop or make changes or anything without talking with her and so you get a couple of those visits built in through your time with us uh, the stress impact assessment like I said we're looking at past trauma past stress uh, we want to make sure that we're handling you as far as what practices are you using, what's working, teaching you. Rick will teach you meditation. He will send you something as a follow-up. You'll have something to use. Um, people get scared of the word meditation. My mother-in-law is a perfect example. She's a devout Christian, and she's opposed to meditating. And when you talk to Christians, there's two different schools. Some of them are huge believers in it because they're open and they know they interpret the Bible differently and then others go oh you know this is allowing Satan to enter your mind like I don't know where that comes from but I love my mother-in-law I have to tell you this but she, she doesn't see it except that the science proves that it's safe and it works and it handles your hormones way better than if you don't do this people who do who meditate and practice mindfulness based stress reduction are healthier happier and have longer lives so you know, doing something that's free on your own to do that and get that result and balance your hormones, why not? So then we look at your skin, not because we think everybody should do something for their skin, but the amount of oxidative stress, so the amount of free radicals and the damage and how easily you damage your skin shows up and we understand how, how like we can just show you how badly off you are. Because it'll tell you, 79% of people in your age group have healthier skin than you. You go, OMG, there's only 20 people worse off than I am in my age group. What, what on earth is going on? And that's when you understand how you're aging compared to your peers, which tells you what's happening on the inside. Um, <clears throat> And then your Monday, every second Monday, teaching is included. Rick does workshops. Dr. Arada is going to be doing workshops. So all of this is included in your program. And you come in and you learn more and get more. And then once you become a clinic member after this process, so it becomes a much smaller monthly fee, then you just get your visits included. You get your every second Monday included. You can continue on the membership site. And it's just tailored per person and where they are. So, that, so that's how it works in our clinic. 